going on out there welcome back to the be smart be hooligans podcast we've got almost all of the be hooligans here uh unfortunately poor jeff is probably seems like he's recovering from a busy weekend so he he's not able to pop in yet uh but we got everybody else here we got my my buddy down in uh louisiana my swamp wrestling bee raising queen bee rearing buddy shall we uh what's happening bud morning everybody dude uh, you put man. on a shirt just for us that's right i finished swimming <laughs> 30 laps already 30 laps man you're ambitious how's I'm them queens uh, we have how's them queens doing did you get back get, get them back up on their feet yet no still i lost them well, I know that, but I thought you said you were going to try and get things kicked up again. I didn't know how far along you were on that. Next week. Next week? Okay. Down in Bellevue, Nebraska, uh, someday, somehow, some year, going to be destined for old Virginia. we got our newbie, our resident newbie, Anthony G. Anthony G., look at you over there, buddy. Got your bebop Yo. hairdo going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I, I'm walking out to my I car. I told Andy if he'd never watched one of them old, uh, one, uh, one of the newer uh, uh, Mutant Ninja Turtle movies, he looks like that character Bebop. He got that haircut. It's the haircut, really. That's the only thing that makes me think of it. But, well, that, and he's he's not the most attractive fellow. But got a haircut only a mother could love, right? Don't ignore me now, Anthony. Yeah, there you go. You now you look like. Well, I didn't get none of that. See on my. See how you. See, are. Okay, I had to put the glasses on. Oh no! Yeah, we didn't say nothing bad about you, Anthony. Just agree. Just agree with him, Anthony. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, man. You gotta play the part, right? I want to introduce our, our our little Arkansas, Alabama, Arkansas hillbilly, redneck. Really, more of a redneck. Our fire no, fire redneck. That you're you're a hillbilly. Yes. I'm a Plains Billy, so I, I can take that you're a hillbilly. <laughs> Firefighting hillbilly, yappy, B-man. What's happening, yap? Uh, Nothing. Nothing. You are so <laughs> low-key today, man. You I know. know. You're bouncing well, off the walls. You got your yeah, butt handed to you yesterday, I, though, didn't you? Oh, I got into one yesterday. Uh, with, uh I've got a two and a half year old hive in a void, in a weird void of a ceiling on a mobile home, older mobile home. Um, it it was one that had an actual vaulted ceiling in it of eight inches. So I got in there and had to to get the get some bees out of there. And uh, it's hot, it's humid, it's nasty in Alabama. July has made you know. Throughout most of these podcasts, I've been talking about how n- nice and mild our, our spring was and winter and now, you know, first part of summer. And all of a sudden, July got here and it, it's back to being in Alabama. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to rehydrate, but life is good, man. I got a huge, huge box of bees at home now. So I'm happy. Awesome. Well, this week, Yappy brought a guest. I'm going to let you introduce your guest, Yap, because you, you have the background and a little more familiar. So tell us who you brought. Well, in my bag of tricks, I, I divvied up a bunch of names, and I pulled up uh, the, the, the raffle chip of Miss Debbie Horn from is it South Carolina or North Carolina? North. She's North Carolina. My, my other guest was a South Carolina. So we're, we're starting on the East Coast. We're headed west. But uh, uh, I got to uh, I got to thinking of some people that kind of interact with us on on Facebook and, and you know, we're kind of in the deal with how people um, like to ask questions and, and give good answers and everything else. And I got to think, you know, 
Um, I've, I've spoke with Miss Debbie a bunch of times about bee related stuff and thought, you know, she'd be, she'd be a good middle between our, our resident newbie and our old goat, Tony, uh, for, for the level of experience. And, uh, she was very happy to jump in and, and join us with the uh, the podcast this week. So, everybody, clap your hands together. Yay for Miss Debbie Horn. Yay. I have the applause going. Everybody can hear it. I took you guys. There you go. <laughs> All right. You know, well, the hey, best part Debbie. about this is, is she's never done a podcast before, and I don't know how much she's really into doing Skype. So, see, this is really cool because – She's she's sitting there at the desk, and we can see her sitting there, and her eyes are as big as um, uh, hubcaps on on an old Chevrolet. But uh, she she don't know what to expect, and and, and we're, so far we've been nice to her. I don't know if that'll change or not. But Debbie, tell us tell us a little bit about yourself, Debbie. <laughs> um, be related. Anything you want I'm, us to know? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm in my third year beekeeping. Um, I started out just wanting honey and then soon found out that, um, this was a really cool addicting hobby for me. And I've been accused of dropping everything to go after bees. So that's what I do. <laughs> so basically you got right the bug, huh? Yeah, you're in it to win it. Got it so bad you can't stand it. Yeah, that. Well, my first year was pretty rough. I had some pretty hot hives my first year, and I was very fearful of them. And then, then I got on Facebook and started getting into the groups on Facebook, and it just really just snowballed from there because I started learning a whole lot. So now, what? What? You're. He said you're a. You're an. Admin on a current Facebook beekeeping group is what he said. Which group is that? That's beekeeping techniques. Beekeeping well, we've techniques. Got, mm-hmm, we've got 45,000 uh, members currently. Cool. That's one group that I am not a part of. I'm going to have to check it out. Of course, they've now yeah. they won't let me in. Thanks, Yappy. Yeah. I'll let you in. I'll let you in. <laughs> now, we, we are on a time delay for posting uh, – for posting the podcast, so you've got at least a few days before you, you post mind, this yeah. one to get in and sneak at the back door. <laughs> oh, well. Well, we got everybody in, in place, so let's kick this off, because uh, I want to hear a little bit more, Yappy, about your uh, your wearisome uh, cutout from this this uh, old trailer yesterday. That sounds exciting. It sounds tiring. I got tired just hearing a little bit about it. It was no. It the the overall it wasn't bad, um, and I say this with all the love to the homeowner who knock on wood. I hope that's the only person that I hope never hears this podcast. But it was, um, it was an older rundown mobile home that they put a secondary roof over top of it. Built, let's see, they built on a whole front half to it, and then put a singular roof over top of it. Then after that, I guess that one leaked, so they put another roof over top of that one. So we're just going to layer roofs instead of, you know, fixing something. Um, all that to be said, it really had no effect on the fact that if you've ever done a bee removal between floors, you know, first and second floor, it was pretty much the same deal. The only thing was was that the weird original design from the manufacturer of this mobile home, they had built this vaulting of the ceiling i don't know how else i would describe it to where um, if you were looking at it from the side it would be the regular level and then it would go up about 10 inches uh maybe a foot and then was just covered that living room area and then it went back down and kind of went on to the end of the trailer but uh there was a little hole where there must have been some form of a light maybe on the side of the house and the uh the bees found the little hole to get into and enough space of a void inside of it to call it home. And sure enough, they did, but, uh, they, uh, you know, got there and it was, it was just like doing a, a normal between floors, high, high removal had to cut, uh, like a, a, a drywall type 
covering and pull that down and expose the hive. And man, they were this time of the year, at least in my area. I mean, we're past the end of uh, the past the end of uh, flow, so it was packed full of honey. Um, a ton of bees, so I was pretty good with it. Awesome, and you got bees out of the deal. I did too, and uh, very nice bees. I gave them a little smoke to start with, and uh, they weren't runny, they weren't jumpy. Uh, they pretty much just tolerated the whole process. Um, didn't uh, this one's kind of got me because I never ended up seeing the queen, but I, I I had where I would run them into big clumps and just vacuum big clumps at a time, and um, I know she's in there because. Uh, uh, the the way they were acting once we got them in the Colorado BVAC catch box, they uh, they were just as laid back on the way home as they could be, just a little bit of fanning to keep them cool for having the amount of bees that I had in the box, but uh, no real big crazy roar on them, so I'm comfortable that the queen's in there. I'll give them a couple of days, and I'll go back in the box and check, and I'm, I feel comfortable that I'll find her. Cool. Now, Debbie, what did you do wrong? You missed it. You, you almost, you got to pay real close attention, but you missed it here. What he did wrong in the whole thing was afterwards, he went and got a sausage for lunch afterwards, and he put ketchup instead of mustard on it. We can't allow that on this show. Bad yappy. Right. No, 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 no. Those are only on hot dogs. You said sausage. <laughs> so, see, I can put whatever I want to because sausage to a Chicago boy is actually a bratwurst. And you put it on bratwurst, right. you just can't put it on a hot dog. <laughs> you, put, you put ketchup on a, you put ketchup on a bratwurst. I put ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, uh, barbecue sauce, onions, and bell peppers. Okay, Chicago well, said it all right there. Chicago people yeah, mess their food up. Yeah, mustard, mustard and sauerkraut. That's what ah, you said. I know. Mustard, onions, and pickles. Yeah, maybe <laughs> some peppers. And from a genetically German uh, uh, person that I am. Uh, yeah, I never could, I never could stomach the sauerkraut thing. Now, if you turn around and you actually said, if you just said Raymond noodles, I would be on my way to North Carolina right now to take you to lunch. But no, you didn't say Raymond noodles, so I'm not coming. Uh, Put ketchup on that too? It's not (laughs) gluten-free. Oh, God. (laughs) I I think it's actually like 99% gluten and 1% uh, chicken flavoring. That's exactly what they are. Now, wait a minute. Shall we ask you? I want to hear this. Do you put ketchup on your ramen noodles, too? No, I go Chicago style on them, too. <laughs> <laughs> but not the shrimp bait. No. No, in fact, I, I, I'm i debating on whether or not I'm when it comes to uh, eating ketchup, if I want to actually flavor them slightly with a little bit of shrimp. I, I mean, I could eat. You know, give me a bottle of ketchup with one shrimp, and I'll be fine. Well, you got it. You got it. You got to add hot sauce and and, and horseradish and uh, some lemon with that ketchup to eat that shrimp. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Cajun. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, I ain't had breakfast yet, and lunch is too far away. So let's talk about bees instead of my belly. <laughs> well, hey, yeah, uh, shall we? We, we've touched on it a little bit ago, but uh, what what exciting things have you done besides uh, deal with your queen problems? You got any good stories to tell us, cutouts, uh, chasing alligators, something like that? Uh, not really. Uh, the, you had one off. job, shall we? Bring us what? a story. You had one job. You got to bring us a story, bud. One job. That's your job. Bring us an adventure story. You're like our own Crocodile Dundee. You're like Alligator Shall We. You need to bring us a story. Well, what kind of story you want to I don't care. To? Just bring me a story. Tell me a story. Bees. Maybe you wrestled bees with in front of alligators while they were in the swamp. I don't know. <laughs> I'll make a story up if I have to. Well, I, I went feed my fish the other day and I sat down in my chair and watched the Bees fly over the pond. <laughs> <laughs> Calgon, take me away. I don't know if I can handle that. You've been kicking back, is what you've been doing. No, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been catching up on a few honeydew. So I, I get that honeydew list every year, and and you know I'm I'm running behind, so I've been catching up uh, on it. Yeah, well. 
a week. We'll let that slide this time. We'll let it go, but we need a we need an action adventure alligator bee chasing story next time. I sure will. Boy, yeah. Hi. <laughs> Debbie. Debbie. Yes. So when I go to a uh, uh, beekeeping techniques, I mean, do I seriously? Uh, is it question answer history and like? How to? Because I know I'm going to have a lot of the same questions. Because you said you're like third, your third year. Well, this is my first season, so I am full of questions, and it seems like oh, I'm I full thought, of mistakes. I thought it was too. Gappy talking. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I thought, I thought it was getting ready to be a punchline there. Oh yeah, no. When you go in, um, you just go in and you say hey, and if you got a question about certain. Um, you know, you just want to know what other people do. A lot of times, um, <clears throat> a lot of times on these Facebook groups, like you'll have an immediate problem and you can get on a really busy Facebook group and get several solutions to your problem. And that's where, you know, what I liked about it was you can see several solutions and you can pick the one that's right for you. Um, you know, right for your predicament, right for your setup, what, what kind of equipment you have. And some people have really intricate solutions to your problem. And some people will be like quick, easy stuff. So, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to have heard to ask, ask 10 beekeepers, get 15 answers, so, you know. Well, see, the problem now is Anthony's going to turn around and have this one in his back pocket. He's going to sit there and he's like, all right, I'm going to question what Tony or shall we said, you know, we're not going to question JP, but, you know, he's definitely going to 100% question me. So now he's going to turn around and he's going to ask us a question, and then he's going to write the answers down. He's going to run over to beekeeping techniques. Then he's going to ask that question, and he's going to poll the audience to see which one of our answers are right based on how many people give that answer, and then he'll probably go with that. See, Anthony, he's a former fireman, so he's going to try to, A, he's going to try to find the, the one solution that seems to fit him, the second thing is is the easiest one that he could get by with to get the outcome to happen. Yeah. And third, right. which one gets him back home quick enough to eat and take a nap. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I see yeah. where this is going with you, Anthony. Yeah, I want to join beekeeping tech. Okay, just never, Anthony, yeah. just never tell them which technique you used. That's the easy way to do it. I'll find there out. You go. <laughs> never yeah. tell never tell them who whose advice you took see i've never told you know i've called yappy and wow. said hey what do i do i like that <laughs> <laughs> but i didn't tell him whether i did it or not <laughs> yep that's a good one i like that yeah yeah I, i've done figured out I, I figured out multiple phone calls ago she turns around and, and what she'll do is she she asks me what she let off one time that she's got at least one other bee remover that I know that she asks. And then she turns around and she comes up with her own theory. I'm, I'm guessing she's probably got one or two more phone call making in there. But, yes, she never tells you which way she went. She goes, that is awesome. I didn't think about that. And then goes on. So she's very complimentary about, you know, the, the idea that you come up with. But she's never one time told me if it worked or not. Now I know your secret, girl. You don't girl. want to offend, and I don't want to screw up the next uh, the next problem I might have, and nobody wants to answer me because I'm not going to listen. So. <laughs> oh, my That's God. Uh -oh. <laughs> Guys, wait a minute. We got to stop what we're doing. We got to quit. Okay, I'm telling you, I'm out of the business now. I'm out of bee removal. I can't do this anymore. Somebody in, here's the news, a beekeeper in Brooklyn, New York, Made an astounding discovery last week. Got a report of bees in a bedroom. He found out in the bee in in the bedroom there in the wall. Where get this now? How many bees do you think were in this wall? Thirty-five thousand. Oh my God! OMG, dude! It's like thirty-five thousand bees. Oh no! And then seventy pounds of honey. Nobody ever prepared this beekeeper to see 35,000 bees and 70 pounds of honey in a wall. I have to stop now. I can't go on. 
<laughs> well, you can laugh about that one. There was actually, you know, I, I bring up a, a lot of the stories on Facebook. There was a story, you know, every once in a while I bring up the bad negative ones, and they usually come out of California where there was the attack of the killer bees and the news agency took off and ran with it. They had one that popped up yesterday that was, funny enough, somewhere up near New York. And the the story somehow went that a, attack of killer bees killed a man and uh, caused havoc in the neighborhood and, you know, got overly sensationalized. Well, here's the back channel story that I ended up finding through people that actually were there. Mr. John Doe is out there working one of his hives. He has a heart attack. He drops the frame, which then stirs the bees up like crazy. He's mm -hmm. down for however long he's down. Now, follow this. Oh, man. He's down for however long he, you know, until somebody realizes what's going on. Well, think about this, guys. What's going to happen if you're standing there and you leave a beehive open in July towards the end of flow, if not during dearth, Big and you've got a wide open beehive? Come on, Big shall we? What's going to happen? Come on, Anthony. That's an easy one. <laughs> you haven't learned anything yet, Anthony. Come on. You should know this one. Oh, I'm like deep in thought. Well, what I'm thinking is they are going to... It's going to appear to swarm, but they are going to they're going to vacate the hive. Now, yeah. why? There's a reason why that that would it could possibly be looking that way. What happens if you've got no flow on and ten beehives out in your yard, and you open one of them up? It sounds like robbing. robbing. It's going to be a robbing. Bingo. So anyway, to, to help oh, you know, nurse this little story idiot. along. So John Doe falls down, <laughs> drops his frame of honey, gets the bees all worked up. Now he's got this hive wide open, and we got bees from wherever in the area robbing it out. So now it looks like complete total chaos in the backyard. They call the cops. They call the fire department. Fire department shows up, and, you know, bees are everywhere. Holy cow, what do we do? And turns it into this chaotic mess, and the... Um, news agency had to sensationalize it talking about the killer bees that were in this yard that ends up killing the man and everything else when it all said and done with was bless his heart he had a heart attack now, I don't I, I, I guess he he passed so we're not going to take that as the truth and gospel but um, yeah all that just because of a uh, of a little situation anyway well he, yeah, if he yeah. had a heart attack, he pretty much stopped moving. Those bees probably aren't going to sting him a ton of times because he's not moving anymore, right? Probably never got stung. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. If the bees robbing and see this big fiasco and don't have a clue what's going on, they think they're attacking him, you know? Well, that would be interesting to find out. Yeah, I think it was like up in maybe New Jersey. I don't know. I'm I'm sure the story will pop around on a few other pages here over the next couple of days. If but uh, if I find it, if I can find it, I'll pass it to Tony to to add the link to the uh, to the podcast down in the description. But well, you know, anyway. in the good old days before HIPAA laws, Tony or not Tony, but uh, Yappy, we could have called a brother firefighter uh, up in that city and found out the truth. Yeah. Well, that that kind of makes me wonder whether or not. No, it was it was a bee remover. They, it was a couple of bee removers that we're talking about that. But they ended up they called they called a beekeeper in to come and help deal with the situation, and that's where the back channel information came from in a, in one of the groups. So, but I can't say that it was as sensationalized as thirty five thousand bees with seventy pounds of honey. Dude, I can't fathom that. I don't. I don't know. I think that's almost out of Shaw Weasley. That's that's a little too much for even you, isn't it, Shaw Wee? Could you handle that by yourself? You'd have to bring JP with you on that one. Or what? The thirty-five thousand bees in a wall. No, oh, that that I don't have that many fingers and toes to count that high. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to paint them as they come in and out. 
you get the little Q-tip with the little dot of paint. So as they come in and out of that entrance hole, you 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 pop them, and then that way you're not. Yeah. I wonder, I wonder what he would have said about the the two full deep catch boxes full of bees in a medium with 350 pounds of honey come out the house. He would have a heart attack. Well, hey, you know, now that I'm looking through this, oh my gosh, uh, in a vacant building, somebody found 70,000 bees. That's twice as many and a hundred pounds of inedible honey. We couldn't, nobody could eat the honey. 75, 70,000 bees and a hundred pounds of honey. How do they, I, I'm in the wrong state. Holy moly. How did they deem it inedible? I don't, I didn't I'm glad that. you asked that. <laughs> Maybe they tasted it, tasted it. Maybe they asked passers-by to come and taste it, and a few of them passed out or something. Let's see. Somebody somebody called me. I got a, a call uh, a couple months ago about some bees in a really old home, and there was it, a very old home, like, you know, like 100-year-plus, and I got some advice from somebody. don't think I called Gappy on this one. But I got some advice from a local guy, and he said he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. He says, you never know where the bees are. And then somebody else said, how about some asbestos honey? So I was thinking maybe that. So oh, here we go. Is. The couple harvested armloads of honey, which the guy said is not fit for human consumption because the building windows contained lead paint and unsanitary surroundings. <laughs> All righty then. Yappy. Remember that honey so, you harvested from that cutout? You can't use that. It's unsanitary of- surroundings around that comb. I put, oh, here's a question. <laughs> Hypothetically, how long ago did they actually quit using lead paint? What was it back in, in the 80s? They were still using it in the 70s, weren't they? Oh, yeah. But- Okay, so let's say the 80s. So there's <laughs> 20, 37 years ago. So for, if if anybody finds honey in grandma's basement, you better make sure that it's it's if it's older than 37 years ago, you've got to throw it away because did they not what, wonder if they painted beehives with non-lead paint only back 40 years ago? You know, that's a very good question. See, this is this is the the things that I have to question here, people. Well, you know, and, and the thing is, the 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 nest was not the nest was not. It was in the wall, but it was not in the window. It was near a window, so apparently, um, they they were close to a window which had lead paint. That that proximity. I'm going to defer to fireman training uh, about lead and poison, poison stuff like that. So if you're within like a two or three foot, you know, proximity of lead paint that's probably been dried for 20 or 30 years, it still makes it inedible, right? Because forget well, hey, the walls on. and the drywall and all of that around there, you know, the lead paint that's 30 years old, that's three feet away, ruins it all. Yeah, I, I want to know well, why you even think you can eat lead paint. That just because it's dry. Well, it tastes good. Okay, I put it check. on my hot dogs, don't you? Yeah, but when you're a kid. Yeah. Well, where did the bees... Well, not to mention, you know, all the herbicides that are on the flowers out there where the bees are foraging, bringing in the honey, you know. You they're know, not going to Okay. Going. We need can to we get that. Stop can we get a, honey an, an ant? There's so much, there's so much <laughs> wrong with it now. I Here. can't eat honey anymore. And eat that honey? No, can't. Hold on, hold on. Too many talking at once. Consensus. Consensus. Can't eat, can't that, eat honey. that honey. You cannot. You cannot. Who's got the echo? Who's got the echo? The mighty, the mighty. The... What? Somebody's got an I'm echo. Somebody's got an echo. Gotta be or Gotta be yappy or I'm printing I was just something. muted. Yeah, I'm muted. <laughs> yeah, Pia, where'd you go? Oh, I'm just I'm I'm in and out with the mute, so that way okay. you know you can't. I can prove it ain't me. <laughs> well, it's gone now, so somebody fixed it. No, 
and he was saying that we have come to a consensus that we can no longer eat honey found in walls because it's it's bad. And then when she mentioned that, you know, herbicides and stuff like that, I mean, how did they even allow us to have honey? I don't understand that anymore. I agree. Oh, okay, okay. See, that sounds like a completely smart aleck answer, uh, ironic, sarcasm answer. No, that's called honey. me being a smart ass again. That's what it is, Anthony. Exactly. That's okay. So we can get a consensus, but we can't get you not being a smart ass. Got it. Have you ever had that happen? Think about that. No, there was, we oh. back me up here, bud. We have to stop selling honey. It's bad. It is bad. I I don't like it. See, Shall we backs me up. You guys are killing me. <laughs> I, I, and so will that, will that walled honey, three feet from a lead based. Nobody wants to give the answer, but I, okay, that's cool. That's all right. I'm I'm a, I'm learning to understand. Well, you're the this. fireman. You had the training. You tell me. Look, let me tell you what I would have done. I would have just walked up, stuck my finger in it, and tasted it. In the pain and then the let honey. you know if it was edible or not. That's what I that 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 was my years of training. That, well, no, that's what it We're did talking to me. about lead paint, so you're going to lick the paint. You're from no, South Omaha, the honey. aren't you? You're the honey wasn't Omaha. in the Be paint. Honest. It's not like it's it's not like it's lead paint flavored honey. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> I wonder, I wonder Maybe if, it was. Maybe hey, it tell- tasted like lead paint. Maybe it was like silver or chrome, something like that. That like a chrome tasty, you know, that had lead in it. And I'm from South Omaha. We we are chefs at eating lead paint chips. Trust me on that. Right, you grew up on lead paint. Yeah, but get, beginning to believe you grew, grew up close enough to South Omaha. You you got some of that dust in there with you. Look, it's that's all the military testing being at military schools and. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I got a few extra shots than the other guys in my class. Yeah. I don't know why, but they can't see that twitch. I guess on a podcast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> We're, hide the video. <laughs> so we've talked about lead flavored my honey and lead paint flavored honey. We've talked about thirty five thousand bees in a wall. Oh my god! What else is there? You got anybody got anything else? Because I've been looking at Google I, News I, I, and it's killing me. Are you- what? Big Bay, I have one for you. Bring it. Help me. Save me. Pretty good. Pretty good. What? Can you hear me? You kind of had an echo, but now I can hear you. Okay. Well, I had a, a local beekeeper. We were in a barber shop getting a haircut, and he come in, and uh, he was all excited. He did a big bee remover. He had a half a five-gallon bucket of honey. And he took out a half a million bees out that high. I'm like, a half a million bees? He said, oh, yeah. He said, if I set them up in a deep, they were well, happy as can be. I said, well, how many deeps you set them up in? He said, one. A half a million. Get that. Half a million <laughs> bees in one box. Was that a Maybe. box like the size of, you know, Alabama? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's a great question for uh, uh, techniques. How big of a box do you need for five, well, half a million bees, 500,000 bees? One box, how big? Technically. Technically. One. Do you, oh, yeah. do you want me to, do you want me to um, post it on there and see what kind of answers we get? <laughs> oh, oh, check that out. We could have instant answers. I bet you they look at, they, you know what? Don't do that because then they'll be wondering about you. We don't want you to get that kind of reputation. What? It's bad no, enough no. that we post stupid I'm... things. We, we don't need you doing it on our behalf. We got yapping for that. Yeah, yeah. really. If you're going to throw somebody under the bus, please <laughs> allow it to be me. <laughs> Yeah, do it, Yanni. That's a good question. Huh? Do it, or I will. I don't care. Do it. Good. Oh, she double dog dares you. Stick your finger, it, stick your tongue in the on the flagpole too. Uh, how, how big of a box you need? How big does that box? No, how, many, how, how many? How many? How many? How many ten frame boxes? No, no, yeah, no. How no, many no. ten frame one boxes? Box. That, that's one box. That's a of half a million bees. How big of a box does that have to be? You know, I know. I know exactly that needs to be directed towards. 
that's like a 30 frame hive box one box 30 frames in it's like a horizontal hive that's how you do it shall we that's the answer he put them in one box because it was a horizontal hive that was four feet long actually that would still be yep. that'd still be like a 12 foot long hive no more like 30 feet at least yeah you're, you're probably right because that's a half a million be- well you know i'll tell you what Maybe he needs to go to New York because in Brooklyn they get them by the thirty five thousands. Yeah, I mean that's he must be trying to type because he's looking down. I am. <laughs> While we're doing that, let's move on to the next thing. Anthony G, are you there? It's newbie time. We need something to distract us. We thought you'd be a great distraction from from all this. You got uh, a newbie thing to talk about? Uh yeah. Oh, that's really the lead into. <laughs> I, well, I had I had a oh my oh uh, I freaked oh, had a freak out moment. Uh oh. Uh oh, he's got an answer. No, that was no, I just oh. liked it. That's not the question. <laughs> oh, I forgot they can. He's got it. On I don't it. know if you can. It says, "How many ten frame boxes do I need to home half a million bees in in one hive?" And then I put in there, "Don't ask. It's a curiosity question." <laughs> <laughs> you will get answers, I bet. So go ahead. What's your OMG moment? Oh, okay. Yeah, so I went to my hives, uh went to my hives a couple days ago and yeah, I made a huge rookie mistake. Uh yeah, smoker went out on me. As I'm getting down into the uh bottom box, I could not get it back going. I had that yeah, it was scary for a minute, you know, I like I ended up calling Tony and I was like, you know, when you're alone and all of a sudden you're surrounded by all these bees and you look down and your leg is covered with bees. I, I literally had to t- I had to like step away and catch myself because I had that fear moment. But it was like that adrenaline dump at the same time. It was, it was actually after it was all said and done, it was fun. You know, I like walked away, let the bees calm down. Did you never did get my smoke on it? Yes, I did. See, PPE. Yes, I did. And Fireman Andy was prepared. Yeah, but when I got stung twice through my pant leg. And, you know, I had a short sleeve shirt on and through my uh, jacket. I was like, that's what made me look down. And I was like, oh, crap. I was I was covered. I had 35 half million bees on one leg. No, not, I mean, not, I guess maybe. <laughs> I was in Jersey. But, but uh, I look up and my dog is he's he's looking at me and starts coming toward me. He got popped once, but he kept coming. And uh I told him no. He stayed, got everything calmed down, got the hive back together. Freaked out. My dogs won't get within twenty feet of my hives. They've learned. They stop yeah. following. Yeah, they figured it my, out. My dog. I just a certain reality. You know, it's like, yeah, we we joke that bees are crazy, right? I don't. We joke. always. I'm dead that, serious that, about it. That. Ain't no joke. <laughs> bees are crazy. And what was I doing? Well, it was told in the story Yappy was just telling. They had, I, they went on attack because I basically robbed them. I, w- I broke their hive apart, being in a hurry instead of taking my time and treating them right. Um, so, you know, they were coming after a brother for real. And uh, a lesson well learned, you know. It's like, I'm going to treat my bees nicer. That's for sure. I'm just being real with it. There you go. Got to well, you got dog nice. issues, but Debbie, you got chickens, that, don't you, Debbie? Do you free and do you free range? Yeah, no, no, we have chicken houses. Houses, it's like nineteen thousand birds in each house. Okay, now that that is a always a major question with people that just get into bees or they're just getting into chickens and have bees, one or the other. But there's always somebody that's going to ask. Well, there's probably about thirty of them a year that ask. Um, you know, can I have chickens if I have bees or can I have bees if I have chickens? I've got, I got hours of footage of my chickens hanging around my bee. <laughs> never one time ever had an issue. 
Well, now I have horses. You know how they always say don't be around your horses and because supposedly there's a smell that the horses emit that the bees don't like. Well, I got a black and white stallion that that is in a pasture that's the the fence is four foot behind my hives and they don't bother him. See, that's but not been my experience. Even in the hives. Um, but I, we did have a horse back there one time that when I got into it my first year, I told you I had some hot hives. They um, went after that horse, but yet they left the black and white alone, which was weird. I don't know. I think it's the difference in the smell. But they tore up that other that other horse. I had to go get him, get him out of the pasture, take him. These were some mean bees. So. What color was the horse? This one was, um, he was a sorrel. Had little, he has a little white on him, but um, mostly just all brown. Yeah, and and yeah. I don't know if that would have anything to do with it, but there's actually a uh, uh, report, and this has probably been 10 years ago in Alabama, that a swarm was flying through said pasture and ended up they, they somehow or another something happened. That nobody really knows anything about the truth, but a swarm of bees came through and and killed a horse. Um, they actually ended up uh, testing the bees because they thought there would have been something with Africanized traits in those bees and tested them, which they did not come back Africanized. But we actually had a horse that was killed by a swarm of bees flying through the yard. So, sorry, just Debbie sitting there with her eyes is <laughs> back to being as big as is a uh, hubcap. Well, the funny part about this is I had to go out and get, I went to into the pasture with my bee suit on, which I'd never approached my horse before with this bee suit on. And he actually let me, let me catch him. Let me, I mean, he's freaking out, rearing up, kicking out. I mean, doing everything he can to get rid of those bees, except for rolling on the ground. And, um, he let me catch him. And I, I got him out of that. He had, if he had one sting, he had 200. I mean, it was, there was little stingers everywhere on him. It was pitiful. All right. Back to, back to our confusing question. How many 10 frame boxes do I need to home half a million bees in one hive? All right. Within four minutes, I got a reply from Dan Higgins who says, I'll say 20. All right. He's not really sure, but he's throwing, he's throwing an idea out there. All right. Annie Solari comes back and said, I would say each deep holds about 15 to 20,000 bees. Okay, so if we got 3,500 per pound, all right, so that's what, three and a half, that's probably pushing three and a half to four pounds of bees in per one ten frame so deep. Per box. She said, but it says, depends on the size, size of said box, you do the math. So if she's saying twenty thousand, if you got half a million, I'll do the math. Thank God, because I was lost. <laughs> oh, she's a math. She's a she's a numbers wizard. So thank God we actually have somebody with a brain here this week. Oh, a brain and a calculator. You can actually calculate. I love no, it. 20, 25 B, twenty five boxes. Twenty five boxes. I'm yeah, skeptical that's a, that's about that many bees in a box. To be honest. Uh, well, that's a – is it Greg Ives that does the big um, – Tim Ives. Tim Ives. Tim, Tim, yeah. So that would be a Tim Ives question probably. Actually, yeah. You're probably right. Shall we sitting there going, okay, half a million bees, 20 boxes tall, 25 boxes tall. I got a ladder that would do that. How <laughs> many queens can I – and he's already going, how many queens can I raise in a box with half a million bees? I could do this. Oh, Definitely. Oh yeah, there's 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 a bunch of mating nukes right there, right? <laughs> hey, now get this: Johnny Mac has come back out with an answer. Here's one we didn't think of as be hooligans. He did make the comment said, "But you'd need ten queens." He says twenty to twenty five boxes, but you'd need ten queens to do it. <laughs> Good answer. Ah. Uh, Johnny you what, wins the internet. It just depends that on was a look at Shawi's eyes. He's like, I could sell him some queens. That's right. He's already. I wish I had a thousand queens right now. 
<laughs> right now, you wish you had one. Right. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Well, I laugh, but I'm not laughing at you because I know what it's like to lose queens like that. That's That's part of the business. I have a hive right now that I just let them die because they were lazy bees. Isn't that horrible? Is that a bad? Is that being a bad beekeeper? I don't, I'm busy making fun of Yappy because he's talking without making a sound. <laughs> keep keep him <laughs> muted. That's a good idea. Oh, she geez. fits in we got another one here. Even. Oh my God! We got a new beehive. Yeah, she ain't been out. She's only been here for like thirty-five minutes, and then she's already ripping on me. <laughs> I think she's a keeper. I think she's got to come back every week. <laughs> what can I bust it on Yappy? That's funny. Oh no, no, no! It's more than that because pretty soon you'll be busting on everybody when we do that regularly, especially <laughs> Bebop over here. Oh, yeah. broad shoulders. <laughs> He's got the fireman shoulders. He could carry the load. Sorry, Yappy. Uh, don't be. I take it every week with these guys. Uh, hey, well, I can bust on. It could be worse. You could be back in Louisiana. Hang you know what they have? They have a nickname for him. We we found out on the podcast a week or two ago. They have a J, JP and Shall We have a nickname that 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 they have for him. They call him B Bait. Yeah, really. I'm the guy they throw in there to start with just to see if they're a hot hive or not. Hey, Anthony, that's what you need to get yappy down with you, buddy. You don't need no smoke or anything. They won't mess with you. They'll, They'll chase him around while you do what you need to do. Shoot, oh, I'll, I'll cook you some oh, pork chops and ramen noodles. Hey. I'll even cook you some shrimp, yappy. Hey, Easy now. Um, Alabama smell. Alabama. Um, Kelly Bird um, responded. She's my buddy. Are you going to keep us oh, in suspense she, or what? What? Are you going to keep us in suspense? Oh, I thought you were there. 17 boxes of each frame is absolutely full. 3,000 bees per frame. If each frame is absolutely full. She she posted estimation of bees on a frame. She wow. She's giving good advice here. Wow. Kelly's great. I no, I, I'm, not on the, I'm not on the group. I'm just get, sitting here watching everybody. See, I love it when you can get a direct answer and not a bunch of Sandoval-isms. I mean, you know, I appreciate everything you do. Well, you know, I know. that's a lot. But, I see how you are. I mean, you're really a nice... Anyways... You know I love that. the direct answer. I'm gonna have to sign up for them right away as soon as we get off this. I'm gonna have to go check them out. Oh, it, it's a it's a good group. Just don't ask. Um, just don't ask about um, ratio between water and sugar. <laughs> that causes issues. That's all right. I learned a long time ago not to talk about oxalic acid either. Right. Oxalic what is it? Acid. I'm calling Randy. Yeah, I said it. Uh, it's <laughs> oxalic. Oxalic. I'm calling oxalic. Randy. I'm getting him on the phone right now. I'm dialing him up. He'll school you. It doesn't matter how you how you pronounce it. It's how you how you spell oh, it. On oh, oh no 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 no. Oh no no no. Got to no. spell it correctly. Got to say it the right way, or it won't work. The magic is gone. Randy Oliver. Telling you right now, school this young man. The magic is gone if you don't say it right. What if you don't use it? Then it doesn't well, matter, right? It doesn't right? matter. I don't use it. You can say it and spell it however you want. But there's no what magic do you that use? way. What do you use, Tony? What do I use? I don't use any of that. Yeah. I eat them. I pick them out one at a time like popcorn. Yeah, what is that attrition word that when you just let them die? It's not nutrition because that's if you eat them. What's the what's the other attrition word other if you trition? turn around and they don't make it? You just let them die. Malnutrition. No, it's not malnutrition. Yeah, through the eat them. There's attrition word. 
Well, like the lazy bees, the, the cutout that I got that should have had honey stored when I cut them out and they had nothing. And then, and then three months later, they still have nothing stored. But they're surviving somehow. And I've never fed them. I think I fed them when I, right after I pulled the cutout. Just, but I fed them all winter long in the place they're at, and and they're finally just dying. I'm I'm just, you know what? That's a genetic line that doesn't need to continue. Oh, I, I agree with that. I mean, serious. I didn't want. I was afraid they'd start producing drones and put drones out in that area where I've got my other bees, <laughs> but they didn't ever they didn't ever produce any drones. So we're good. Wow. Did you guys see what time it is? Holy moly. It's that time. We've had so much fun. It just went by just like that. You said like that, man. Hey, shall but we? But you started late. No, we didn't start late. It's been 50 minutes. We only record for maybe an hour-ish. So we've gone through that much time recording. Shall we, buddy? What you got for the rest of today, the week, whatever? What are you going to do that we can hear about next week? I'm uh, uh, I have a job lined up for tomorrow, so I'm going to work in the flower beds today in the, uh, the honeydew list and then uh, do the cutout tomorrow and uh, come back to the honeydew list. But I'm still building boxes and frames and tops and bottoms in between all that, too. I'm about to say, you know? every time we talk to you, you're do- building boxes. You're always in the shop building boxes. you got more boxes than any beekeeper I know. I got I got five pallets in my garage right now that's still palletized that I got to open up and start on them when I run out the ones in my shop. So okay, I put Yo, them on. Yeah. Uh, What's that? This is never no, ending. No. Never ending. Go go go. You go ahead, Debbie. Mm. He's done. No, yeah, it's fine. Please. I just. No, I've got ADD. I was going to change the subject. I'm so sorry. Uh, I was happy. What you going to do, bud? You get, you're about ready to go fireman? Yeah, actually, yeah. Um, one of the guys that I'm here with just said that uh, assistant chief showed up, so I'm going to have to step away for a minute. But uh, I'm not going to disconnect yet. I'm going to see what's going on with this. But as far as the podcast goes, guys, I'm out of here, and uh, I enjoyed it. Debbie, thank you so much for being on this week. Uh, you added some very nice fun and humor I guess to the to the I hope podcast. I didn't add even, too much, uh, yeah, even I hope though I, didn't I was add too much controversy by talking about letting my bees die. Oh no, no, no it, there won't be any controversy. You're, you're right there. at home with me and Shawi. There, they're they're still <laughs> laughing at the fact that you tore me a new one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bud. Andy, Andy, you look like you're waking up a little bit. Heaven forbid. What's yeah. up? I'm going to have to watch yeah. the podcast so I can see you guys facing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it is a podcast, so fortunately they don't get to see our faces, Debbie. Um, so you got to get your camera. Oh, you got to get your camera fixed for, for next week. But uh, let's see. But next week I'll be in Virginia. Um, me and my wife are taking a road trip to see family, check out our land, talk with our uh, architect. And I'm going to start looking at where I'm going to set up my hives for when I make the big move to Virginia. Ooh, so Next week, time. we need to talk about how many bees I saw in Maine last week. Was it more than 35,000? I saw one honeybee. No lie, one honeybee. In all of the state of Maine? All over the place. Every place I went, I was hunting flowers, looking at flowers. One honeybee. Because they all went to New York to that wall in that building. That's why. <laughs> Debbie, what are you going to do? What are you going to leave us here? And 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 uh, what do you got planned? Are you going to be busy with the uh, with the the Facebook group and all that? You going to go back and have to settle everybody down after Yappy posted such silliness on there? Uh, no, I'm not going to do nothing. I just sit and watch sometimes. <laughs> I don't do much. I try not to get too much into it because um, I just watch. If they need help, I I, I, I like kicking people out. That's what I'm about to say, <laughs> you seem like the quiet type that carries the big band hammer. You just wait for somebody to say something wrong and then boom, you're gone. <laughs> that's, what, that's what they 
That's what they nicknamed me. How did you know that? That's funny. The guy that owns the group nicknamed me the Hammer. Man, yeah. Hammer. You and Yappy would be good. Nice. <laughs> he liked doing that. He's good yeah, at that. That's me. Well, everybody, we've that's had some funny. fun this week. That, that pay. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the Be Who Leaves on the Be Smart podcast. We're getting everybody wound up still there. We're going to have some fun and catch us next week. And don't forget, go to besmart.bbe-tech.com. Listen to the other episodes of the podcast. Check out the website. We've got the FAQs pages. We've got the forum. We've got all kinds of stuff. We got videos on there. We've got the spotlights that we hold up every week. Check out the Be Smart website and keep checking out the Be Smart Be Hooligans podcast. We're going to have a ball. Stick with us, folks. All right. Remember, be smart. <laughs>